Today, we are starting a brand new unit for inquiry. And this unit is titled, Energy and Fuels Are Derived from Natural Resources. Wow, that is a mouthful. Energy and fuels are derived from natural resources. Right now, you may be thinking, wow, what does that mean? We're going to break it down for you. Before we do that, though, when we're breaking this down, I would like you to write down some vocabulary terms. So right now, I would like you to grab a piece of a notebook paper or grab your notebook. And at the top of a blank page, I want you to write vocabulary terms on the top line. Pause the video to grab these supplies and write that at the top of your notebook. Now that you have the words vocabulary terms at the top of your page, when we are writing definitions for vocabulary terms, on the line to the right of the red line, the first line at the top, we can put a vocabulary term such as energy. After we write the term, we can draw a little dash, that little line. And the definition of what the word means will come afterwards. I suggest to skip a line between each vocabulary term so that when you look back at these notes at a later time, it's easy to see each term. Pause the video to write energy and that dash on your notebook page. So this title, what does it mean? The word energy. It's the ability to do work. Energy is how things change and move. Energy is everywhere around us. And it takes all sorts of forms. It takes energy to cook food, to drive to school, and to jump in the air. The two bullet points that are highlighted in yellow, this, these words are what I would like you to write right after the dash for the definition. So that the terms in yellow, I'd like you to write on your notebook page now. Pause the video to write the two bullet points in yellow on your notebook. Now, the word fuels. They're a substance, as oil or gasoline, that can be burned to produce or make heat or power. At this time, I would like you in your notebook page, after you, wherever you finish writing your definition for energy, you will skip a line and then write the word fuels with a dash and then write the definition that is in yellow next to it. Derived. This me word means to come from or obtain from a particular source. An example of this vocabulary term used in a sentence, many medicines have ingredients derived from plants. So that means that certain ingredients in medicine came from a plant. I would like you to add this vocabulary term derived, write this word derived on your notebook page, and then put the definition that's highlighted in yellow, write that next to the term. Pause the video to do this. Our next vocabulary term is natural resources. Natural resources are materials that are found in nature and that can be used by people in many ways. Example 
examples of natural resources could be fresh water, soil, coal, and forests. They're all examples of natural resources. I would like you to add the terms natural resources to your notebook page and then copy down this definition highlighted in yellow on your notebook. Some more vocabulary terms. And for each of these terms, I would like you to write down the word, the vocabulary term, and the definition afterwards. Generate. This means to produce something. Turbine, a machine that is constantly moving. It revolves using running water, steam, or air. At this time, I would like you to add the vocabulary terms and definitions, generate and turbine to your notebook page. Pause the video. Our last two terms are geothermal and fossil fuel. Geothermal means producing something from the heat of the earth. Fossil fuel, a natural fuel such as coal or gas formed in the past from the remains of living things. At this time, I would like you to add the definitions of geothermal and fossil fuel to your notebook page. We are now going to watch a, a short brain pop video about energy. As we are watching, I would like you to write down at least two facts as you watch. After the video, you will take a picture of your facts and the vocabulary terms from your notebook page and post them to Seesaw. Dear Tim and Moby, where do we get the power to heat our homes, light up street lamps, and move cars? From Abby. Humans use energy for everything. As a result, we've come up with a lot of ways to generate it. Probably the most basic method of energy production is from burning biomass like wood and animal droppings. This campfire my dad built is a good example of biomass energy. Biomass energy is used all over the world for cooking, lighting, and heating. Now, if you're talking about electricity, there are lots of ways to generate that. Most involve a device called a generator. Generators come in tons of shapes and sizes, but essentially they all do the same thing, convert motion into electricity. Here's the basic principle. If you rotate a coil between the poles of a magnet, an electric current flows through the coil as it passes through the magnetic field. Good question. Finding the energy to turn the coils is the real trick. Here are some ways to do it. Water-powered or hydroelectric power units use water trapped by reservoirs and dams to generate energy. Water flowing through a small opening in a dam can turn a wheel called a turbine, which is attached to the generator. This can also be accomplished by using the ocean's tides. At high tide, water is trapped in a reservoir. At low tide, the water is released, turning turbines. Windmills work in a way similar to hydroelectric plants using energy provided by the wind. Both wind and water energy are often also used to create mechanical energy, turning gears to pump oil or water out of the ground or to grind stuff up or anything really. Geothermal energy comes from hot rocks in the Earth's crust that hold temperatures up to 1000 degrees Celsius. Water heated by these rocks turns to steam, which turns the turbines of generators. Solar energy comes from the sun. Heat from the sun can be focused onto water, creating steam, which turns the turbine of a generator. Solar energy can also be converted directly into electricity with the use of a photovoltaic cell. Nuclear reactors take advantage of the unstable atoms in substances like uranium and plutonium. 
A process called nuclear fission splits the nuclei of these atoms, creating a controlled chain reaction and generating a lot of heat. You guessed it. The heat turns water into steam, which turns the turbines of generators. Then we have fossil fuels. As their name suggests, fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas come from the remains of dead animal and plant matter. Fossil fuels are burned, turning water into steam, turning turbines. A couple of problems with fossil fuels. First, burning them produces a lot of pollution, as well as carbon dioxide, which contributes to global warming. Second, the process that turns a tree into a fossil fuel takes millions of years, much longer than it takes us to burn it. At our present rate of consumption, it's not a question of whether we'll run out of fossil fuels, it's just a matter of when. Some say it could happen in the next few centuries. That's why scientists and industries are working hard to develop alternate energy sources, like fuel cells, for example. Fuel cells convert hydrogen and oxygen into water, producing electricity in the process. The only byproducts of the reaction are heat and water. The kinks are still being worked out, but hopefully alternative energy sources will bring us closer to safe, clean energy sources that humans need so badly. <coughs> now you've done it. Dad, the, the fire uh, went out. Hey, pass me a marshmallow. <coughs> I meant a fresh one. All right. If at this time you weren't able to get two facts down from that video, feel free to rewind this video to go back to find one of those facts. At this time, you have wrote down some vocabulary terms and definitions for this unit and watched a short brain pop video. You learned a lot today and there was a lot of information coming at you and a lot of new terms that you may have never heard before. We are going to be learning more about these terms each day. So do not worry. This was a lot of information and we will go slowly through this unit. At this time, I would like you to take a picture of your vocabulary, terms and definitions, and your two facts and attach them to the activity on Seesaw. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. 